can get started. Yeah. Perfectly fine. All right. So I'm going to go over today um, the settings in command just because there's so there's so much in there. It's um, it's overwhelming <laughs> what's there, but it's beneficial because it helps you know like if you archive something or if you're trying to import a contact and it says it's already there but it's not in your con it's just it's good to see what's all on the back end that way um you can help find things as as you need to okay, one second. got people trying to log on that can't get on because the passcode come on Oh, here we go. All right. Okay, sorry about that. Hopefully they'll be able to log on here shortly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. So this is your command, as, as always. You, it runs best in Google sign in agent.kw.com. You can bookmark that to your um, toolbar here. It makes it super easy to access. Um, you're gonna find all of your settings up here under your name. So you'll just click your name here. And then um, second one down is the gear, which is your settings. So you'll click here. So when you initially click on your when you initially click on the settings, um, it pops up your application settings. This is where you're connecting other external things to your command just for fluidity purposes or to connect your social media accounts to uh, be able to post from them. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's all there. If a lot of Excel agents use dot loop or if you're a cat partner agent you use dot loop, and it doesn't pop up up here. Um, a good, you just need to come here to the marketplace to find that. So this is for dot loop just because it doesn't pop up in here anymore like DocuSign does. So if you would ever need to connect dot loop, um, just click up here on the marketplace. It'll load. Come on. And then right here in the corner search bar, just type in dot loop, hit enter on your keyboard. And then it's right here. This is first one, you don't need the MailChimp sync, just the good old dot loop. And then um, I just put it on their Facebook. One second, sorry. Eight four zero zero three two. Eight four zero zero three two. Um, they change this, but yeah. you can put request to buy, and then it'll take you through. It acts like it's buying it, but it doesn't cost anything, so you won't be charged anything. Then once you download it, you'll refresh your screen, and it'll pop up here. So that's how you get dot loop if it does not show up here, so it can connect to your command. Um, but you can go through and connect DocuSign if you use that. Um, for your social media posting, um, post scheduling is just posting to your Facebook pay business page, whereas Ads Manager is creating those paid ads. So you do have to connect both in order to do both. Um, but if you connect one or the other, you can only do what whatever it says right here. Just to clarify that, just um, and you do connect your personal Facebook account just because your personal Facebook is basically the home for your business page. So they will never post on your personal page. It'll always go to your business page, but it's got to have that hub connected in order to access your business page. So like when you create ads, you'll see it, it'll pull up your name and then you click the Dropbox to choose your business page to post from um, or to put at the top to link to essentially. So that is the difference between post scheduling and ads manager. So make sure you have both of those connected and you can connect more than one Facebook account if you would have it. If some people make 
um, their business page like an actual personal page, but just market it as a business page. So that would need to come straight from there. But if you have a legitimate Facebook business page, it would just um, come from your personal. Hope everyone's okay. Okay, looks like everyone's being able to log on. Um, same for Twitter. This is post scheduling. So that's just the scheduled post that goes on your Twitter account. That is not an ad. Um, for Google Calendar, Gmail, and Office 365, you can connect these to um, command. What this does is, um, so it doesn't necessarily like import any of your emails or mirror um, your calendar or anything like that. What it does is if you send an email to your client, as long as it's the same email that's in their contact card and command, it will log in their timeline that you've had that conversation. It doesn't put in the email information, like the body of the email. It just puts that you had, it's just a tracker essentially. So you can use those to help when you're, um, if you have meetings with them, if you have email conversations with them, it will track the dates and times of that, but it doesn't track the content of those. So that is an option for you. And then PySync as well, you can sync your database. If you have your database or contacts or client information in another application, like um, especially if you're trying to import your database from your iPhone or from, I mean, anything and everything's on here just about. I, can't, I shouldn't say everything. There's over 150 applications on here. Dot loop, if you have most of your client information in there, um, all kinds. I mean, these are all they have to choose from. And you can search here at the top if you're not sure. These are um, you know, iCloud, Outlook, Google Contacts, Microsoft Exchange um, are some of the more popular ones. And then as you scroll down, they are in alphabetical order. Um, so I haven't heard of like 90% of these things, but obviously they're a thing. Facebook lead ads. If you're posting Facebook ads straight on Facebook and not through command, I'm not sure why, but to each their own. <laughs> Some people prefer it that way. Um, you can connect Facebook lead ads through PySync. So it will still um, import that information for you. Uh, but yeah, HubSpot. Any, um, if you use any of these um, third-party um, applications, you can connect them to command. That way you can easily import your database. Um, please be mindful though, and make sure you read these when you're connecting them, just because some require certain information. So for like the iCloud, you have to have an email for the contact in order for you to be able to import it. So if you have, 500 people in your phone, but only 20 of them have emails, then only those 20 contacts are going to be imported. So just be mindful of what they require in order to import, just so you're not creating a lot of extra work for yourself. Um, so that is a good tool to use to get your database in quickly. As we scroll down here, we have more marketing. This is the Twitter ads manager. So that is the paid ads function. So you do have to have, be connected in order for it to um, post. And then Google AdWords, if you have a Google AdWords account, um, they have that as function as well. As you scroll down here more, um, we have command email. That is provided to you for free from Keller Williams. You get 5,000 free emails a month and that resets every month. Um, it's a lot of emails, so <laughs> I don't know of anybody who's reached 5,000 or exceeded that. Um, but if for some reason you can pump out over 5,000 emails a month, they do have a plan. It is, you do have to pay for it, but you can get more than that. Um, but this is made mostly for um, email campaigns um, and smart plans. And then MailChimp is um, another version, kind of like command email. It's not. They have a free version, but it's what I heard is very limited, um, but you can connect your MailChimp if you do have a MailChimp account. Um, and then last but not least, there is Twilio. Um, so Twilio is a texting service that is integrated with Command. 
Um, so for your smart plans that have texts, it can automatically text them for you. And then you can actually have text conversations in command contacts with this. Um, pros is that it's super cheap. Um, the smallest package is like 300 credits and I think it's $3.16 a month. Um, so it's really cheap. You can pick a local phone number. I know mine's a Texas phone number, but you can pick a 614, a 740, 937, whatever area code that is in your area or that you mainly service. Um, you can get a more direct number. Um, they haven't done any phone number masking yet, um, meaning using your cell phone number. So it will have to be a different one than your personal number, um, but it's really cheap to use and it just makes it one less step that you have to complete. And then there is also now call forwarding. So if somebody would call your, your Twilio number and you have call forwarding set up, it will forward to your phone and it will recognize their number and um, you can have conversations. I don't recommend that you stay on it long just because it does use credits. Um, so those credits that you pay for, um, it will eat them up pretty quickly. So I don't recommend just having a full conversation, but you are at least not missing out on those calls if, um, if they happen to call that number. I can tell you right now that if you don't have call forwarding set up and somebody does call you, you will get a notification up here that said this number tried to call you. So it's not completely, you're not completely out of the loop if they do call you and you don't have call forwarding set up. It's just not going to ring to you. It'll just notify you. So those are all the applications that you can set up for your command that are just makes things run smoother. Um, general settings over here, if you have a team, if you're on a team, those in the Rainmaker, I don't think anybody else has access to, but team management settings are there. Um, under command settings, applications, that is this one. Under your contacts, if you archive a contact um, and then later try to add that same contact and they say duplicate email or this email is already in use, you want to come here just to double check and see if at one point you had archived them or they somehow got archived because um, you can restore them from here because command's ultimate thing is they don't want to create duplicates. So if they're in the archive, it's not going to add. So if you ever get that error, come here first. You can search the archive list um, and then you can restore them. Or if you want to completely permanently delete them from your command, you can hit the little delete button. Um, and I believe, yep, yeah, if you select multiple, you can do bulk action of those as well. If for some ungodly reason you would want to completely wipe out your database, you have that option. You can also create contact tags here, um, as well as when you're creating the contact. These are the custom tags um, for yourself. Lead sources, um, if you want to create custom lead sources, you can do that just like you can tags. Where this is beneficial is when not only for reporting wise, so the more you put into this, the more contacts you have in with lead sources, the better you're going to see where you get your majority of your business for. So that tells you one of two things. One, where your strong suits are of um, lead sources and number two where you may want to focus to build the other portions up so if you get mostly referral maybe you want to work on marketing just to grow um, so these are good tracking um, systems to use for your business to better your business and then we have custom fields so a custom field is if there's something that you want to know about every single client um, you can put create custom fields that way when you're filling out a contact card it's there every time any questions on the contact settings okay and again if you guys have any questions feel free to interrupt me um so the next one under command setting is opportunity settings so this kind of falls in one in the same um, you can archive opportunities say you had a client that was really rambunctious about wanting to list or wanting to buy, and then they backed out. 
but you still kind of have a relationship with them, but you don't want that opportunity in your pipeline just messing with your numbers, you can archive it and then come back to it later. Um, so I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but the bottom one here is opportunity archive, which is the same as like um, contact archive. So you can restore them um, if you would want to come back to them later. Um, we have client updates. So if you had my class last week, you know, um, you should have access to that checklist. So opportunity checklists, you can put them in command and they will filter over each opportunity. And then as you check them off, if you sign your clients up for these client updates, it will automatically send them an email at whatever time of the day you prefer, um, letting them know what's happening with their transaction. So it's just a streamlined way of keeping your clients in the know letting them know what's going on. And if you click on this preview here, which I'll show you, um, this is what it, the template looks like. So this is what your client would get. Obviously it would be customized to you. Um, and then the property address would pull from the opportunity. And then it just lets you know what has been done. So it's, I think it looks nice, it's clean. Um, you cannot edit this, so you can't customize this, um, but it will pull all that information for you. Um, I have a few admins here at Cat Partners who absolutely love this feature and it works well. Um, so if you want to streamline something, this would be a good thing to do. Um, design templates. I'm assuming this is a coming soon thing for those client update emails, but there's nothing here. Um, opportunity tags. If you wanna be able to easily categorize your opportunities, um, you can create tags just like you do for contact tags. So that would be a good one there. Um, and then again, the opportunity archive is there for you and you can restore them easily. There's nothing in reporting, um, import logs. So this goes back to contacts. If you use that CSV spreadsheet, um, that those logs are housed here. So if you ever lose a log, ever misplace the log, want to look back on a log and also the error logs, they're all housed here. So it gives you dates and times of when you imported them. It lets you know how many were initially imported and then how many failed. Um, that means that something was wrong with the contact or they were already in your command, um, but you can download those, those files just so you always have those to fall back on if you need them. Um, so you can just click download, it'll create that CSV and then the error file is anybody who was who failed and they should tell you why they failed. Let me download this one really quick and see if it shows me. It'll be all the way to the right. Let me see. Yep, so it's right here, which is kind of cut off, but if you click on it, it comes up at the top. So this contact, basically this email is already in here and that's for all three of them. So that's why those people failed. Um, but yeah, if you scroll all the way over to the right, in this last column here, it'll tell you why. So that's helpful because at some point before they didn't do that and you'd be like, well, you know, it's it was a scavenger hunt, but now they're trying to help you out, let you know why they're there. And then you can just go back into context and search that email address to find that. So that is there. So that was command settings. So when you think of command settings, just think of, applications, the big stuff, your opportunities, your contacts, those are all there. Connect settings are is your marketing profile. So here is where you see this logo or your should be your headshot or your logo, um, your name, all the information, all of your information that goes on to your website, all of that is here. You always wanna make sure this is on, so you will it'll brand to your agent site. If not, your agent site will look generic. Um, your headshot will go here or your logo. If you have a team logo or your personal logo, you can put that there as well. You could put your headshot here, team logo there, because on your website, the team logo pulls up, not as your headshot, but in the team logo spot, but it doesn't, affiliate you as a team, if that makes sense. So um, if you have a personal logo or if you're on a team, 
put that there just so um, like in on your website in the top left corner they have the kw um, logo or if you have your um, market center logo and then i'll have your logo next to it and then as you scroll down your information your license number your team again that should probably say cat partners but your professional job title um, designations credentials if you have any extra your bio phone numbers all of that's here um, your market center logo i know this looks wonky here but it looks okay on the website and everywhere else um, ideally they want it 360 by 360 but this is okay too it will look okay at least for where i've seen it your market center information should auto populate and then um, compliance stuff, any of that, any social media you want to attach to your website or anywhere else that's there, Facebook and Google Analytics, and then your app. So all that information is there. If you update anything, make sure you hit save, otherwise it will not update. And then global settings is empty, and then um, command MC is for the market center. So yeah. So any questions on settings or connectivity, anything like that? Rachel, I have a question. Yeah. On your title. On um, which part? Well, I've been going to find it here. Um, I guess we're uh, lost it here. So I had a question back to me from another class. That's where you have your title, like realtor. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Your professional job title. Yeah. Um, how is that supposed to, do you know how that's, but the way I see it on your screen, is that how it's supposed to be displayed? Yes. And oh. I think it automatically does that because I didn't put like the little the copyright R, R in yeah. it. <laughs> Um, I think it should by default. If it's not, let me know and I can like copy and paste this to you in an email. No, that's how mine is, but okay. I don't know, for some reason I had a question more licensed realtor. So um I think with the like copyright R that it should. Okay. Yeah, because you'll have your license number up here. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, I will um, let you all go. I hope you guys have a great week. And if you're not signed up for family reunion, you need to get there. It's going to be great. There's all kinds of new features. There's new, um, more things to do than even at Mega Camp. So. It's a good opportunity. Um, it's $129 to register. You can register at familyreunion.kw.com. Right. I had a question about something else not related to this class. Okay. Um, I missed the class um, February 4th where you have the detailed listing and buyer checklist. Can you share that with me? Can you email that to me? Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Absolutely. And then you can watch it on our Facebook page. It's on, on Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Yeah. But I'll send you the checklist. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else want it or need it? While I'm on that. Hey, Rachel, this is Buffy Patterson. Could you send it to me as well? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Have a All great right. day. Thanks, you too, everybody. We'll see you later. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Bye.